Whether you are a beginner or looking to level up, have you experienced pressure to have a unique or popular art style or a feeling of not making consistent progress with your art skills? In this video, I address those concerns by sharing tips on how to gain a better understanding of your learning style and how your learning preference influences how you approach your art. While I present this info, I'll be practicing my drawing skills for pen and ink both in my studio and out in nature. I noticed a reoccurring question around the emphasis that's placed on finding one's art style. While surveying for those answers myself, a common theme in the responses from professional illustrators and visual artists on social media is that art style develops naturally. And to be yourself, do the art that makes you happy. Let's take social media artist Sam Yang. Sam said that he started out doing fan art because that's what initially got the likes. And it was only when he switched to doing what he was most passionate about that the magic happened. Okay, cool. But sometimes drawing what makes me happy turns out kind of ugly. And there are days when it feels like progress is way slower than I'd like. But I can get out of that mental rut. First, I always feel better after I've reaffirmed my goals. As a sidebar, if you watch my video on self-directed learning, I walk you through the steps on how to set up a learning plan to achieve your art goals. My main goal is to become masterful with pen and ink drawing. And what makes me happy is when I'm engaged in what I'm doing, meaning I'm energized by the process, which in turn has a positive effect on my skill development. It makes learning fun. In that context, I get results faster because I'm in the zone. I'm in the zone. It's a subtle shift in mindset, yet significantly more motivating than focusing on finding my art style. Because uh, that's kind of vague. When I believe in my own ability, to learn, I begin to trust that my best art will emerge as a result. Second, we all understand that there are no shortcuts to doing the hard work, but we also know that there's usually more efficient ways to reach our goals. Here's a scenario. Have you taken a course in the past or a workshop to later be disappointed in how little you got from it? It felt like you didn't learn anything new, it was a waste of time and money. Alternately, have you come across a tutorial or someone like Sam showed you their process and it literally Really changed your life? Why did one resonate with you where the other one just fell flat? Was it the content or was it in the delivery? Maybe it was both. Let's dig a little deeper. When I did my master's degree, I was introduced to the fascinating revelation that each of us has a different preference to how we receive information and how we retain that information. Auditory. This learner does well with podcasts, audiobooks. You're the person who remembers what people have said and the lyrics to every song. Kinesthetic. This learner does well by practicing the concept as it's introduced. It's hands-on. I want to skip the theory, get to the good stuff right away. This is the person who assembles items out of the box first without ever reading the instruction. Visual. This learner does well by watching a demo in action or a process video, even if there's no voiceover to explain. This is the person who'll flip through a book to look at all the pictures and ignore the big blocks of text. Read, write, and draw. This learner does well by doodling concepts as they're introduced, likes to take notes, draw some mind maps, and does read the blocks of text that go along the pictures. This person appreciates a step-by-step -step manual with examples or a workbook with instructional exercises. Most of us have a preference for one or more of those learning styles, and to retain the information, you'll also lean towards a preference for reflection, so you need to think about it and see how that information applies to you. Or you might want to verbalize it, so you need to discuss it and talk it out loud. Repetition. Some people need way more practice than others. I fit in that category. If you're uncertain about your preferences, ask yourself the following questions. What's worked in the past? When did you feel most engaged with what you were learning? When was it boring or frustrating? Was it because of the topic or was it in the delivery? Why is it that we can get hooked on an activity or an idea even if it's about something we don't generally like? Perhaps we're fully engaged because it's presented in a way that caters to how we best receive and retain information. It's interesting, entertaining, and it lingers on your mind. How quickly you grasp a concept or perfect a skill is largely influenced by whether there's a match between how the content's presented and how you naturally learn. To clarify, it's not a race. For me, I value efficiency in the context that I find it rewarding to see progress especially if 
It gives me the ability to work on more challenging projects sooner. If I'm frustrated with my progress, it usually leads me to procrastination or just ghosting my project. Let's see how having awareness of your learning style preference can have an impact on your approach to growing as an artist. The two most common types of approaches are generalist and specialist. To determine which type is more like you, let's take a quiz. You're given a learning activity. The objective is to apply the art fundamentals into a pen and ink drawing. You're then provided a list of those fundamentals. Are you most likely to learn as much as you can about one fundamental before moving down the list? Or are you more inclined to learn a bit about each one and skip around the list? Okay, here's another one. You're given five different drawing tools and let's pretend you've never used these before. Is it more exciting to try all five tools at once in your drawing? Or will it be more fun to get really good with one or two before moving to the other ones? According to the Knowles model, a specialist approach is more linear. You move through a series of steps and it's a tendency to go deep. According to the Spear model, a generalist approach is like clusters, assembling clusters of learning activities into a whole. It's a tendency to go broad. It doesn't mean that you can't be versatile as a specialist, only that you'll be more engaged in an activity when you can first concentrate on one before branching out to the other stuff. It doesn't mean that as a generalist, you're a jack of all trades. It means that you'll be more interested in learning if you can first get to the highlights or understand the key points from each of the topic areas before circling back to your favorites. Why does this matter? Having the self-awareness of whether you will flourish going deep or going broad when you're developing a skill will get you there faster because that's where your magic happens. We're conditioned early in life to learn a little bit about many subjects. That's how institutional learning in the education system is traditionally set up. And it's often not until adulthood that we gravitate toward our natural tendencies for how we learn and apply new skills. Historically, those in life who have a strong awareness of their preferences on how to excel tend to achieve extraordinary things. Throughout this video, you've watched me how I enjoyed these repetitive basic line exercises and that's because I have a read-write learning preference. So I typically do a multitude of studies and sketches before doing a final drawing because I also need a high volume of practice to retain the information and I have a specialist approach. I like to go deep into an activity before moving to the next phase. My methods might seem mind-numbingly boring to you if it's a mismatch with your preferences. Reflect on other aspects of your life. For example, how do you approach fitness, career paths, or even how you travel? Do you prefer to visit as many attractions as possible on your vacation or immerse yourself in one location? If you can spot a pattern, then you'll know that it can also work with how you approach growing your art skills. When we believe in our own ability to learn, then we can trust our best art will emerge as a result. As always, I wish you the best in your art journey. Resources mentioned in this video are listed in the description below. And thanks again for watching. Be sure to click that notification bell so as not to miss my next video.